Crimes like murder and assault involving guns are on the rise, and state lawmakers are trying to do something about it. They're in Washington, D.C. this week talking about legislative solutions to gun violence. Denver 7 political reporter Megan Lopez is digging into the data, looking at what can be done locally and nationally. For months before the midterm elections, you heard in campaigns and in television ads that crime is up across Colorado. Now we're getting a closer look at some of the numbers behind those claims. Denver 7, in partnership with Newsy, has obtained and aggregated data on the use of firearms. We found a big increase in murders involving guns in major cities. Denver experienced a 74% increase between 2019 and 2021. Aurora, meanwhile, saw its murder rate involving firearms double, and Colorado Springs saw a 28% increase. It's something that state lawmakers say they're keenly aware of. We're second as it comes to cause of death for guns. Number one would be drug overdose. So it's a problem that we really have to address in the state. There was also a major increase in aggravated assaults with guns. The biggest jump was in Lakewood with a 900% increase, going from 15 assaults in 2019 to 150 last year. Denver, meanwhile, experienced a 63% increase. Aurora saw a 117% increase. And Arapahoe County saw a 213% increase. We're definitely seeing a surge in, in crime across our state. Senator Rhonda Fields is in Washington, D.C. this week, meeting with the Biden administration to talk about solutions to that gun violence. And she says the federal government should be following Colorado's lead. We have a, a limit on the magazine. We have background checks. This summer, President Biden enacted 21 executive actions to reduce gun violence. Some modest but meaningful gun reforms were also passed by Congress. Last week, the president made another push to Congress to ban semi-automatic assault weapons. Fields is also considering some state reforms, like closing some red flag law loopholes to require enforcement and also some changes to assault weapons themselves. You shouldn't be able to at a very young age get access to these weapons and then use it to harm other people without anybody thinking maybe we should think twice before we allow that to happen, as well as with age limits. The D.C. meeting was meant for the White House to give Democratic state lawmakers a to-do list for their upcoming legislative sessions. That's where the Biden administration really seems to be betting when it comes to gun reforms. But with the data that we've obtained, it's clear that there is a lot of work ahead to reduce gun violence in the state. Megan Lopez, Denver 7. And digging deeper on gun sales in the U.S., according to safehome.org, gun sales hit record highs in 2020 and 2021. 21 million guns were sold in 2020. Last year, 19 million guns were sold. And that number is more than double the number sold in 2001. The previous record was 2016, 16 million guns sold that year. Well, in Colorado, more than half million guns were sold last year. Four states had gun sales topping one million. Texas, Pennsylvania, Florida, and California. And this data only reflects gun sales where background checks were initiated. Of course, private sales can happen without those checks. We also wanted to look at how long it took someone to buy a gun and then use it or suspected to have used it at a crime. Analysis of ATF data shows between 2019 and 2020, there was a nearly 70% increase in the numbers of recovered guns from crimes that had been bought seven months earlier. Nationally, that number jumped 90%. Colorado has taken steps to reform gun laws. This year, 22 Democratic state lawmakers formed the Gun Violence Prevention Caucus. The goal is to streamline solutions and bring the conversation into daily discussions at the Capitol. Lawmakers say gun violence is a public health crisis and it needs to be talked about regularly, like taxes or schools.